Hi, I'm Dr. Connor McGuire. I'm a nuclear medicine specialist, uh, and I do radiology as well. I was uh, recruited to return home to the province. Uh, I was in charge of the molecular imaging program at the University of Alberta Hospital for several years, and I have several years' experience with uh, PET imaging. PET means positron emission tomography. Um, essentially, it's a very uh, unique form of uh, nuclear medicine imaging where we inject radioactive molecules into the body. These little radioactive molecules will emit radiation that we can detect and create three-dimensional images of the distribution of those molecules throughout the body. Now, what's unique about it is that it's giving us functional information about tissues and organs and also it can, can look at, you know, when we look at anatomic images like a CAT scan, we can see uh, uh, lesions that look like lumps and bumps and, and defects in organs, but we don't always know what they are. The PET scan basically allows us to specifically characterize pathology because it's giving us functional information. Those molecules that we inject are taken up by certain normal physiologic processes, but also disease processes that are very specific. So it's a functional image as opposed to a pure anatomic image. And I, I think that's probably the best way to characterize it. It's a functional molecular image. Diagnosing cancer in the first place, it can be very helpful to tell us if a lesion that we see is cancerous or not. But people with, with cancers, it can be very helpful to tell us how well the cancer is responding to treatment or how extensive the cancer is before we start so we can help plan the treatment. Um, so just to give a few examples, I think lung cancer, and that's one of my biggest area would be lung cancer. Uh, we know that PET scans will upstage patients about a third of the time, and downstage them about 20% of the time. So probably about half the patients that we have with lung cancer, the entire management plan will change based on the PET scan results. So we may you know, offer, we may think somebody has more advanced disease that doesn't have advanced disease who could be cured when we didn't think they were cured before we had the PET scan. Or alternatively, you might have somebody we think is curable based on a CAT scan. We, we find that they're actually incurable with a PET scan and we don't put them through necessary treatments. Currently, we send approximately two to 300 people outside of the province to have this examination performed. It's extremely uh, beneficial in patients with cancer as well as a number of other conditions, including some cardiac and some neurology uh, complications and uh, diseases of interest, particularly Alzheimer's. Uh, that's certainly one of our keen areas of interest. Um, but being able to have it here means that we'll be able to offer it to more patients. Uh, more patients will be able to benefit from this particular process of being able to both identify disease and identify the, the positive effects of treatment. So I, I think it'll be a great boon to people in the province. This is very exciting technology. A cyclotron is a machine that is a particle accelerator and basically what happens is you will accelerate say a proton, it will hit a target, it, once it hits this target it creates in this case, uh, FDG, which is going to be the most common uh, pet pharmaceutical that we'll produce. So the cyclotron is the means by which we produce it, as opposed to uh, with our current medical isotopes where we have to get it shipped in weekly and sometimes daily. Uh, the problem with bringing isotopes in, number one, is our weather. Even bringing in existing isotopes, we're challenged almost, you know, monthly that, uh, with uh, delivery problems. Our, we don't have hospitable uh, weather. Uh, transportation can be problematic. It's a radioactive material, and it decays, meaning that it... Uh, when you start out with 100 percent, in, in this case in, with the PET isotope, uh, FDG, in about 110 minutes you're left with 50 percent of it. So if it doesn't get here quick, we won't have enough left to use it on patients. So it's imperative that we produce our own here. We have a supply whenever we need it. We'll have enough supply to do all the patients that are required in Newfoundland Labrador. So I understand that a cyclotron creates a radioactive material. So I'm just wondering, should staff, patients, and clients working or being treated at the health science complex be concerned about possible exposure to radiation? No, um, not at all, because all um, radioactive materials are governed by, are, and their use are governed by the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission. We have stringent re regulations, license requirements that we have to abide by. The new facility, the Dr. Nuclear Imaging Program will be located basically to the north of the Cancer Center. So kind of between the Cancer Center and the Autism Center. So right now, um, um, the way you access uh, the Janeway through the east entrance, uh, sorry, the west entrance of um, there at Mosdale, 
um, to the Janeway Emerge, the, uh, basically it's going right there at that entrance area. If we try to renovate uh, an existing suite or to um, you know, basically use some existing space, it'd be almost impossible. Um, first of all, there's a lot of safety features in the design itself um, that are required, that we're required to have. Uh, for example, uh, you know, six foot thick concrete, uh, trying to renovate an existing portion of the facility to do that is almost, you, you have a room that's very small, a very small box, so to speak, and um, lead lined walls, and um, the cost to renovate would, is not, not conducive to what we want to do, and we wouldn't get the facility we want at the end of the day that can do what this facility will be able to do. So. Well, to benefit patients, uh, we'd love to have the program up and operating uh, as soon as possible, right away. Uh, but we hope to have the general infrastructure ready for 2015, uh, have the PET scanner operational hopefully by the middle to late 2015, and have the Cyclotron itself operational by 2016. So the, I guess the entire program operational by 2016.